In today's video, I've got five facts about Itsuki Kawasumi from the series The Rising of the Shield Hero slash a character analysis video. But hey, if you're new here, why not join the Form 4 community by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss a video. And a quick warning that this video may contain spoilers, so just a heads up. But with that being said, let's roll intro and get straight into the video. <music> Itsuki is one of the four legendary heroes. He is a male human and is 17 years of age. Height wise, he stands at 163 centimeters, which makes him five foot three. He has very light brown short and curly hair and golden green like eyes. Though Itsuki looks like the youngest of the four heroes, he is actually a year older than Ren, the sword hero who is 16. As for attire, Itsuki ironically is rocking a very Robin Hood like vibe. Fitting for the bow hero, right? So he has a cream undergarment with a brown tunic comboed with plates of armor covering his left shoulder, breast and hip and a small green cape that flows over his right shoulder. Comboed again with this is the classic adventurer boots and gloves to match. Now personality wise, Isaki is a pretty interesting case. He actually believes that he is the strongest of the four heroes and had a weird ego to match. He claimed for himself the title ally of justice. However, this pretty much just a fake persona that even he tricked himself into believing. What he thought he was doing as noble was basically just him doing these deeds for the selfish desire of praise. He cared not for, you know, what he was doing or who he was helping, or not helping I should say. Itsuki was all about the honour and glory that came from being a hero, rather than actually performing these quests the way a true hero would. Now his true colours really started to show with his interactions with Naofumi. So Isuki, Ren and Motoyasu believed the world they had been summoned to was actually just a game. Isuki had the worst case of this as he believed that he was immortal in this world because the game made it so. His jealousy at Naofumi began to show within this concept of his as he believed that Naofumi had met God aka the game master of this world and received special powers and praise from him under a fake sense of justice. Now, this of course drove Itsuku to play the justice card himself and would overly use the phrase. Not only that, but he refused to listen to anyone else and was consumed by this fake sense of justice he had self-concocted. It was arrogant, self-sided and completely delusional. So Itsuku basically in a nutshell is stuck up, desires praise and is of course gullible. He's the kind of hero that waits for people to be in a crisis situation before acting and would make excuses about his abilities to cover up the fact he was only acting out of the reward of praise. In fact, Naofumi once said to him, I thought you were better than this. My evaluation of you has dropped. This of course enraged Itsuki, so much so that he actually took a shot for the back of Naofumi's head. Itsuki wields the legendary bow. This bow gives him amazing offensive power and range. Just like the other four legendary weapons, these will evolve and become stronger with the more skill the user acquires. Now, being a ranged weapon, Itsuki excels in stealth quests and in providing backup. In fact, he did seem to have spent quite a lot of time with the sword hero Ren, that the two of them had, you know, as we have seen on many occasions, created quite the strong teamwork together. Now, of course, the bow does have the same drawback as the other legendary weapons in which the hero that wields this legendary bow cannot equip any other weapons. Appearance wise, it's a white and golden longbow that has a special yellow jewel just over the grip that allows the bow to transform with the previously mentioned skills. Itsuki's Japanese voice actor is Yoshitaka Yamiya. He has voiced other characters such as Tomohito Sugino in Assassination Classroom, Tatsumi from Naragami Aragato, Itsuki Tadano in Ace of Diamonds, Okisuki Mikuni from Aldenoa Zero, and more. Itsuki's English voice actor is Eric Scott Kamara. He has voiced other characters such as Haruyuki in Axel World, Ryuji from Toradora, Speedo Sound Sonic in One Punch Man, Ayato Amagiri from the Asterisk Score, and more. Prior to being summoned to the other world, Itsuki was from an alternate version of Japan, just like the other three heroes. We don't know an awful lot about Itsuki, but we do know that he was bullied a lot as a child, which is the main reason behind his drive to be special and 
praised for being a hero. This is most definitely the, you know, cause from where his fake conception of justice and desire for praise stem from. Now, how and why was Itsuki summoned to this new world? Of the four heroes, Itsuki had the most classic of Izakai, or the world transportations, in the fact that one day on his way home from prep school, out of nowhere, he was hit by a speeding truck with no warning and died instantly, which of course led to him waking up in this new world with the other legendary heroes. You know, I'm willing to bet a pretty high price that he was wearing a tracksuit too. I know we saw him in a school uniform in episode one, but his death is just too Izakai for him not to have been wearing a tracksuit, surely. And fun fact, Naofumi is the only one of the four legendary heroes that did not die prior to being summoned to the new world. I know. That being said, make sure you check out my videos on both Motoyasu and Ren to check out their backstories. Pretty interesting stuff. Finally, I want to talk about a member of Itsuki's party that will prove to be an interesting character, and, you know, I hope they use her in the anime. The character in question is a girl called Rishia. Technically from a noble family, though they lived in a farmhouse. Her family, though noble, governed a small, poor town. Now, a neighbouring town led by a nasty piece of work, Noble eventually took Rishia as part payment for bodyguards he provided in order to keep their town safe from bandits and the like. Turns out, these bodyguards were also the same bandits causing all the trouble in their town, and Rishia became somewhat of a slave girl. So, Isaki and his party were investigating the evil Noble, and one evening saved her from him and put an end to the Noble's evil doings. Rishia, feeling indebted and a whole lot of gratitude, decided to join Isaki party. However, she would only ever be used as an errand girl, leaving her talents for magic wasted and unused. Rishia reminded Izuki of his weaker self, and she ended up getting mistreated by him and the rest of the party. Instead of helping her to become strong at her use of magic, they forced her to focus on her weak points to make her more of an all-rounder. Now, there was this one quest where Rishia played a very helpful part, and actually ended up receiving praise from the queen herself. And yeah, bet you can imagine how Izuki took that. That's right, awfully. So what he ended up doing was framing her and kicking her out of the party. Now, guess who came to the aid of this girl? That's right, Naofumi. So Naofumi questioned Itsuki as to why, and Itsuki said it was because she was weak and he did it for her own benefit, which as you can already tell is all BS. Naofumi, being the good guy that he is, though he refuses to acknowledge he is, <laughs> of course took her in and she joined his party. Under Naofumi, she inevitably became much stronger. Why did Naofumi take her in? This was to prove to Itsuki that she wasn't weak and that she was also a person strong and worthy enough to have stand by your side. Now, of course, as you can imagine, this obviously causes a further rift between Itsuki and Naofumi, mainly on Itsuki's part, as he attempted to take down Naofumi's party on a couple of occasions. But even throughout all of this, Rishia still felt the same gratitude that she held for him that day he saved her and would defend him no matter what. Further interesting events, of course, follow regarding these two, which I hope we get to see in the anime, and I'm hoping it gets extended beyond 25. That would be awesome. But thanks for watching. This is my video, five facts about Izuki Kawasumi from the series, The Rising of the Shield Hero. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you'd like to see more characters from this series, let me know in the comments. Also, don't forget to smash the like button if you enjoyed this video, as it really does help these videos reach a wider audience, and subscribe for more anime content. Till next time, my fellow weebs, peace.